on world news tonight. Energy emergency. The United Kingdom struggles to keep up with power demands opting for power saving incentives. A lethal shootout. California suffers more deaths as yet another shooting wrecks havoc in Half Moon Bay. Russia retorts. An evening out of Estonian diplomats including the ambassador to Moscow leaves relations with the Baltic nations tumultuous. And shimmering lights. Drones light up the skies and cities of China in lieu of the Spring Festival. This is Adhaderana World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Suzanne Chanelli. A very good evening and thank you for joining us on World News. Now, leading tonight is still the dire situation in Pakistan. As we reported on Monday, Pakistan suffered a huge power cut following a breakdown in its national grid, leaving millions of people without electricity. The situation there is getting worse now as some areas have a shortage of drinking water since the pumps were powered by electricity. Tens of millions of people in Pakistan were left without electricity on Monday, the power ministry said. It's the second reported major breakdown of the national grid there during the last three months. Factories, hospitals and schools across the country had no power for hours. It came after a voltage fluctuation in the grid occurred in southern Sindh province, according to the country's power minister. Traffic lights and computer screens went dark in Pakistan's commercial capital, Karachi. This was the scene at the Pakistan Stock Exchange. Outages were also reported in the capital, Islamabad. And in Peshawar in the north, some of the city's 2.3 million residents said they were unable to get drinking water because the pumps were powered by electricity. Commuters were left stranded at this metro station in the eastern city of Lahore. The sorry state of Pakistan's power sector is emblematic of an economy that's lurched from one international monetary fund bailout to the next. Electricity outages occur frequently because of a lack of funds to upgrade aging infrastructure. When the grid broke down in October, it took several hours before power was restored. The power ministry issued a statement saying that work was ongoing to revive the system. Turkey's President Recep Tayyip Erdogan has told Sweden not to accept his backing for its bid to join NATO after Swedish police allowed a Quran to be burnt by a protester outside the Turkish embassy in Stockholm. President Erdogan was at a youth rally announcing the date of Turkey's next election. As he was speaking, a polemical Swedish activist was burning a copy of the Quran outside Turkey's embassy in the Swedish capital. Today, the Turkish president gave his response. It is clear that those who caused such a disgrace in front of the embassy of our country can no longer expect any benevolence from us regarding their application for NATO membership. We told you from the beginning that you will let terrorist organizations run amok on your streets, in your alleys, everywhere, and then you will expect us to support you in joining NATO. There's no such thing. Do not expect such support from us. That anger was also reflected in protesters outside the Swedish consulate in Ankara. The provocative demonstration in Sweden only drew a small crowd, but it was the authorities' decision to allow it to go ahead that infuriated Turkey, triggering a major diplomatic rift. The energy crisis is worsening in the United Kingdom. It has come to a level where up to a million households in England, Scotland and Wales will be paid to use less electricity as a part of a scheme to avoid blackouts. Britain's national grid said it would pay customers to use less power on Monday evening between the peak times of 5 p.m. and 6 p.m. For the first time, it is operating a scheme called the Demand Flexibility Service, where customers get incentives if they agree to use less power during crunch periods. The operator said the move did not mean electricity supplies were at risk and advised people not to worry. These measures were announced to ensure that everyone gets the electricity they need. That's according to the firm's head of national control. Back in December, the company said that over a million British households had signed up for the scheme. National Grid has also asked for three coal-powered generators to be put on standby as the country faces a cold snap. 
This announcement does not mean they will definitely be used, it said in a separate statement. The coal-powered generators were last put on standby in December, but they were not needed then. Below freezing temperatures have been recorded across much of the UK in recent days, with National Weather Service, the Met Office, last week issuing severe weather warnings for snow and ice. The United States has announced that it is ready to support Serbia in the wake of its tensions with Kosovo. The reasoning behind this move, according to U.S. Special Envoy, is due to the Belgrade's willingness to sanction the Russian Federation. The international community expects Serbia and Kosovo to make efforts to defuse tensions between Kosovans and Serbs after EU and U.S. envoys visited the region last week. The territorial dispute remains a source of instability in the Balkans as Moscow's full-scale invasion of Ukraine rages on. Washington is ready to offer Belgrade economic and diplomatic support on the condition that Serbia joins Western allies in sanctions against Russia. If Serbia fully participates with the West, then Washington and Brussels might ask Kosovo to meet Serbia's demand in granting Serbs the right to live in northern Kosovo. But, in turn, the U.S. wants Brussels to press ahead with EU integration. According to the experts, a solution to help both sides integrate would be the introduction of standardised Western Balkans vehicle licence plates. The IAEA chief says that the threat of a nuclear accident is very much possible as the chief plans to visit the Russian president soon. The threat of a nuclear accident in Ukraine is still very high. The director of the International Atomic Energy Agency has said, just back from Ukraine, where he also met with President Zelensky. The IAEA has a handful of people on the ground monitoring Europe's biggest nuclear plant, which is not producing energy at the moment. Rafael Grossi met EU foreign affairs ministers in Brussels to discuss the ongoing war and the nuclear threats, Iran too, and the blocked negotiations around the nuclear deal. As a guarantor of the so-called JCPOA, the IAEA would like to keep the line to Tehran open. But the ongoing repression against protesters is making dialogue even more difficult. The EU is also considering new sanctions against Iran enlisting the Revolutionary Guards as a terrorist entity. We're going into short commercial break. We'll be back soon with more World News. Welcome back to World News tonight. Now, just after the horrendous massacre in California on Lunar New Year's, at least seven people were killed in another mass shooting in California itself, this time in the coastal city of Half Moon Bay. Police later arrested a suspect 67-year-old local resident, Chun Li Zhao, and said that they believed that he acted alone. This is the moment officers caught who they suspect was behind California's second deadly mass shooting in three days. Several people were killed in the northern coastal city of Half Moon Bay on Monday, about 30 miles south of San Francisco. In a late news briefing, Sheriff Christina Corpus named Monday's suspect as 67-year-old resident Chun Li Zhao. She said deputies had found him in his vehicle in the parking lot of the sheriff's substation. Zhao was taken into custody without incident and a semi autic handgun was located in his vehicle. Zhao is believed to have acted alone and there is no further threat to this community. This is a devastating tragedy for this community and the families touched by this unspeakable act of violence. Corpus said officers responding to a call found at least seven people shot dead in two locations near each other in Half Moon Bay. She added that police did not yet know the motive for the killings. In the earlier shooting, 11 people were killed in Southern California in the city of Monterey Park in Los Angeles County. Russia has told Estonian ambassador Margus Ledra that he has until the 7th of February to leave the country. The move comes after Estonia told Russia on January 11th to cut the number of diplomats it has in the Baltic nation to eight, equivalent to the number of Estonian diplomats in Moscow by February 1st. Estonian Ambassador Markus Lydra entering his country's embassy in Moscow just days before he's forced to leave Russia. 
In a tit-for-tat move, Moscow and Tallinn have expelled one another's ambassadors amid increasing tensions between the two countries. Moscow has accused Tallinn of Russiaphobia after Estonia earlier this month ordered the Kremlin to radically reduce the size of its embassy staff in the country by the beginning of February. It's the first time since the start of its war in Ukraine that Moscow has expelled an ambassador from a European Union country. Both diplomatic representatives are to return home by the 7th of February. Estonia and Russia say that missions in their respective capitals will now be headed by chargé d'affaires, meaning that diplomatic relations will be operating at a reduced level. Dressed in aprons and bandishing bouquets, hundreds of bakers demonstrated in the streets of Paris to warn that the country's beloved bread and croissant makers were under threat from surging electricity and raw material costs. Bread, like the world-famous baguette, is integral to French culture. But soaring energy prices have hit bakers hard. And today, they marched across Paris to demand more assistance from the government. Organized by the Collective for the Survival of Bakeries and Crafts, they're asking for a state-supported tariff shield against the increasing cost of electricity. I've never demonstrated in my life this will be the first time what we're asking for are fixed energy tariffs, not subsidies, but a fixed tariff. Today I'm laying off two people, my pastry chef and my salesperson. Even although they also have a life, they have bills to pay, they also have a life like everyone else. While not all bakers are in agreement about the way forward, they were all behind today's march. And so are the customers in this bakery. Of course they must demonstrate in order to be heard. I'm with them, it's impossible not to be. With more bakeries forced to close, there's concern about the impact the crisis will have on France's famous baguette, which was recently added to UNESCO's cultural heritage list. Burkina Faso's transitional government has ordered French troops to withdraw from its territory, saying its own forces would defend the country against the Islamist jihadists it has battled for almost a decade. Burkina Faso has decided to end a military accord that allowed French troops to fight militants on its territory, the government said on Monday. The West African country is facing an insurgency by groups linked to Al-Qaeda and Islamic State. Large swathes of land have been taken over and millions displaced in the wider Sahel region. On Saturday, Burkinabe National Television reported that the government had suspended a 2018 military accord with Paris on January 18th giving France one month to withdraw its troops. The next day, French President Emmanuel Macron said he was awaiting clarifications from transitional president Ibrahim Traoré. But on Monday, government spokesman Rimtalba Jean-Emmanuel Wadriogo said, we don't see how to be more clear than this. The vision of the Burkinabe transitional government, according to Wadriogo, is for the country to defend itself. He added that it was not the end of diplomatic relations with France and that Burkina Faso still wanted support in the form of military equipment. French authorities did not immediately respond to requests for comment. But French influence in its former colonies has been declining. That could be seen in Burkina Faso's capital, Ouagadougou, on Friday. Hundreds gathered calling on the French army to get out and burning French flags. Both Burkina Faso and neighboring Mali are ruled by military juntas that seized power in the past two years and have burned bridges with traditional allies. Last year, French troops pulled out of Mali after a deterioration in relations. That departure coincided with the Malian junta's decision to hire Russian mercenaries to help it fight insurgents. Macron has accused Russia of predatory influence in troubled African countries. Burkina Faso has not confirmed or denied recent reports that it has also decided to hire Russia's Wagner Group. On the last day of the Lunar New Year's holiday, people in South Korea are experiencing some of the coldest weathers of this winter. Flights from Jeju have been cancelled and heavy snow could affect travellers in the southwest of the country. A drop of nearly 20 degrees overnight. 
On the last day of the holiday, people in South Korea who have been traveling across the country to visit family could have a tough journey home. The Korea Meteorological Administration, or KMA, issued cold wave alerts for almost every region of the country as of Tuesday morning. Seoul dipped down to minus 17 degrees Celsius, a drop of 15 degrees from the night before. The wind chill in the country's capital made it feel like minus 27 degrees. The cold wave will peak on Wednesday when Seoul will see lows of minus 18 degrees and Busan, where cold waves rarely take place, will see minus 12 degrees. But the temperature will start to rise from Wednesday afternoon and on Thursday, the weather will return to the annual average of about minus 2 degrees. Along with the cold wave comes heavy snow of up to 70 centimeters on Jeju Island. Gwangju and the southern parts of Cholado provinces could also see 30 centimeters of snow. So drivers on the west coast and on highways in the southwest must be careful of slippery roads. Nearly 70 percent of flights on Tuesday from Jeju Island have been cancelled, stranding around 30,000 passengers. The Ministry of the Interior and Safety says people should refrain from going outside while the cold wave warning is in place and should check the TV, radio or internet frequently for more information. Welcome back to World News Tonight, and for more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. China's northmost city of Mohi has hit the coldest temperatures on record. Mohi, which borders Russia to its north, recorded a temperature of around minus 53 degrees Celsius, breaking its previous record set in 1969 at minus 52.3 Celsius. Police used tear gas to disperse protesters trying to protest in Lima downtown as hundreds took to the streets over the ousting of former President Pedro Castillo. Demonstrators in Lima threw objects of police who responded by firing tear gas. Brazil launched its first raids against illegal deforestation in the Amazon rainforest in Pará under President Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva after the new leaders pledged to end destruction that surged under his predecessor Jair Bolsonaro. Prosecutors brought high treason charges against five people who allegedly planned to kidnap the German health minister and were prepared to kill in order to topple the German government, the Attorney General said in a written statement. Nigeria opened a billion-dollar Chinese bill deep sea port in Lagos, which is expected to ease congestion at the country's ports and help it become an African hub for transshipment, handling cargoes in transit for other destinations. And that's all the news we got for you tonight. Join us again tomorrow for more news around the globe. And in case you missed to watch any of the stories we add tonight, you can always re-watch by catching us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. Now we are leaving you tonight with clusters of drones lit up the sky over Chinese cities in festive celebrations to greet the arrival of the Chinese New Year. Thank you for watching. Stay safe and have a good night.